Hey, what's up, DaVinci Resolve community? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip, and today we're going to be making this energy ball effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. Now, everything done in this tutorial can be done inside of the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. Also, if this tutorial helps you, please go consider supporting me on my Patreon page or on buymeacoffee.com. Links in the description below. It'll just really help me out. Okay, let's get right into the video. So for this video, I'm going to be using uh, some videos from productioncrate.com. As you can see, we have some like energy ball effects uh, that they have for you that you can just easily composite uh, all together and make some really cool effects. Okay, Production Crate offers all of these and most of them up to 4K for a single price every year. I'll have a link in the description below to where you guys can go check that out. It is a great spot for any visual effects stuff that you do. Okay, so anyways, let's get into this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick the ones that we're gonna be wanting to use. So I'm definitely gonna want to use uh, this first one here. Okay, as you can see, it cuts off, uh, but this is a loopable graphic. So if we just copy it and paste it, and then just trim it up, just like so. Um, as you can see, that will loop perfectly. Okay, uh, then let's go ahead and grab this orange one. Um, now the color is different, but we can change that inside of Fusion using some of its color correction tools. All right, now that we have all that, let's just bring down our uh, timeline here and then select all of these right click and then do new fusion clip and now as you can see combine all these clips into one if we come into fusion as you can see we have four media ins and they're all merged up and it has this like little uh crosshair thing but if we just move it'll fix that okay and now let's go ahead and just organize all of our clips all right there we go i'm gonna close my spline editor and now we're gonna go ahead and start working on compositing all of these together so i'm just gonna hold down shift while i select all these and then just drag them up and that'll disconnect it from the main line and now let's come to the first frame then do shift space and type tracker and now i'll just grab this tracker and put it on the palm of my hand somewhere that's going to be in frame the entire time all right there we go, and now we're gonna go ahead and track this forward. All right, that is done here, so now let's just click OK, and just verify that the track looks like it's pretty good, and it does, so let's just hold Shift when grabbing the tracker, and then just move it off to the side. Now what we can do is go ahead and start uh, merging up these assets. So let's go ahead and grab a background, okay? And we'll just merge it up with the media in two, make this transparent, and then grab the end of the merge one and merge this up with the media out. Then grab the end of the merge one and merge that up with the media out. Now if we just add a transform node, uh, right click on the center, do connect to, tracker one, tracker one path, position. And as you can see that is locked on to the tracker that was on my hand. And if we come up to the modifiers, what we can do is just add a displacement so it uh, comes up a little bit. Okay, so something like that. Come in the tools, we can scale it down and just get the height to be pretty good. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and merge up rest of the assets, okay? So pretty much how we're gonna do that is just extend this merge into here and go like that. And after the media in three, do shift space, type color corrector. And now with this, we will just add um, a blue tint to it. Uh, so just like that, and as you can see, that matches pretty well. Okay, now let's go ahead and check out the media in 4, and let's add a transform after this one, and scale it up so that that is just kind of around the edges, just like that. Also add a color corrector, and tint this blue as well. So there we go. And I want the media in 4 to come into the background, so let's just go ahead and uh, grab this, hold down shift, and drag it over here. And I accidentally had my background selected, so that kind of messed it up, but that is fine. All right, there we go. I'm liking something like that. So next up, what we're going to want to be doing is making it so that there's like the light from the energy ball shining in our hand and rest of the scene. So let's uh, first up just add a color corrector to the end of this and do an overall correction uh, just to make it like a lot darker. So bring down the gain, maybe up some contrast just a little bit. There we go. And what we're going to be doing is extracting my hand so that we can make a reflection onto that and nowhere else in the scene at the moment. So let's do shift space type blue here and grab the color corrector input. So I mean we could do it from the media in one. It's just I'm going to be using the red values now instead because there's uh, more of that than the luma values. So as you can see uh, it's easier to detect my hand after the color corrector. So let's check out the luma here now. Change the channel from luminance to red. And now go ahead and bring down the high. And just fine tune the settings until we get it so just my hand is visible. And again, just play around with these settings until you get something very close to what you were looking for. And now we can play around with some of the other uh, tuning settings. 
add maybe a little bit of blur to it. Okay, so now as you can see, we have like this uh, wall off to the side. Let's say I don't want that. Let's go ahead and get a rectangle, put this into the garbage mat, okay? And then invert the rectangle and do right click in the center, connect to tracker one path position. And now we can just extend the rectangle until only my hand is inside of it. All right, then if we go through and watch this, as you can see, the wall will not be showing up inside of the shot. We can go through and add a soft edge on the mask. There we go. And now let's go ahead and after the Lumicure, do a color corrector. And now after the Lumicure, do shift space and type color corrector. And inside of this, we can just add like a nice blue tint to it. If we view my hand, like there is a energy ball that is putting light onto my hand. So let's view the final. So now that we've viewed the final, we just need to merge the color corrector up on top. And as you can see, that is already reflecting the color. Nice. So now we're going to need to make it so that it doesn't have this weird fade off effect. And how we're going to do that is kind of re reworking our setup. So let's go ahead and delete this merge, grab the color corrector, and then just put this onto the entire picture. Okay. And now the Lumicure is going to come into the color corrector as the mask. Okay. And now after the Lumicure, let's add the bitmap node and make sure this is coming into the input so the yellow one and then coming back into the mask okay now inside of this we can add like a soft edge um and we can play around with the settings on this and there we go after playing with the settings i've arrived at something i like just like this and next what we're going to be doing is before this color corrector we're just going to go through add another one so in the first color corrector let's also go through and add a tint of blue and that's just going to make it look like that is the actual part that is emitting light inside of our image. So that is pretty much your effect, but there is one effect that you guys can add, but this is only available in the studio version, and that is going to be the lens reflections effect. So after the final merge, just do shift space and type lens reflections, okay? And now this is going to be a little intense when it first comes on, so we can just bring the brightness down. Uh, just make it like a little subtle effect. It almost adds like a lens flare to your video. And there we go. So now we can come back to the edit page. And once this red line turns blue, uh, it'll be ready for a completely smooth playback on the edit page. As you can see, this is a really cool looking effect. It just tracked down perfectly. That lens reflections effect really adds a lot to it. And all of the color correctly matches. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and also comment down below if you guys have any questions. If this video helped you, make sure you guys head over to my Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon page to support me. And also subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. See you guys next time for another video.